Hello and welcome to Ask Wardy. I've got here a jar of erythritol. Xylitol is similar. The question we're talking about today is, are xylitol and erythritol healthy? Here's the situation. You know you need to get off sugar. You know that fake sweeteners, artificial sweeteners like aspartame are poisons of another kind. But yet there's health foods, there's health blogs, there's health experts that talk about xylitol and erythritol as being natural, healthy, or safe. Is that true? Are these healthy? Are they safe? Could it be possible that you can uh, enjoy sweet treats without sugar by using them? Could they be the answer? That is what we're talking about today. I'm so thrilled that you're all with me. Welcome to Ask Wardy. This is the weekly show where I answer your questions about traditional cooking. And today's question comes from Macy D. So hi, Macy, thanks for your question. A couple housekeeping notes, the, the notes, the transcript, the links, everything is ready for you at askwardy.tv. Just look for episode 80, because that is today's episode. So if you need to leave, you wanna bookmark it for later, share, love sharing, that's where you go, askwardy.tv. This is our usual practice, by the way. If you go to askwardy.tv, you will find all the notes, links, transcripts from 80 episodes to this point. That's where you go. While you're coming on live on Periscope and Facebook, please share your first name, where you're from, what you're sipping on. Mine looks pretty pale right now, uh, but this is apple cider vinegar and water with a bit of stevia, uh, so it's not so sour. Um, I convinced myself when we did our last Ask Wardy about um, healing from acid reflux that apple cider with vinegar was so good, so I decided to help my digestion and sip on it more often. So that's what I've been doing. Okay, so if you're live, please share those things in the comments. I love to read them. If you're on Facebook, hi Facebook friends. Um, my daughter Hania, hopefully, baby cooperating, should be in the comments posting links, everything I mention and answering your questions. And of course, I'll go back later uh, to catch up with you all of you. So let's dive in. This question today comes from Macy D. She says, Wardy, I love your story of losing 30 pounds in a year combining Trim Healthy Mama with traditional foods. I know you said you basically didn't eat sweets much, only dark chocolate, and sweetened your drinks with stevia, as I've got right here. Uh, what did you do for birthdays or holidays, though? Did you ever use xylitol or erythritol? Are they healthy? I know I should give up sweets for the most part, but I don't know what to do about those special occasions when stevia won't work you don't have a recipe um, but I can substitute one of the um, alternative sweeteners like uh, xylitol erythritol also called sugar alcohol I can substitute them cup for cup in my recipes from before I'm eager to hear what you think thank you so much this is a really good question Macy you're not the first person to ask because um, I've briefly talked about this when I shared my trim healthy mama story um, so I'm really glad you brought it to our attention again so I can go into it more. Because when I, um, when I did my podcast, uh, my, my other podcast, we're doing Ask Gordy right now, but for a number of years we had, I don't remember, 100, 100 more than 100 episodes of what I called Know Your Food with Wardy. And I shared my Trim Healthy Mama story there of combining Trim Healthy Mama with traditional foods. And there was one episode that I did called um, If I Were Starting Trim Healthy Mama with Traditional Foods All Over Again. It was sort of my lessons learned. And I shared that all I need for dessert is dark chocolate. That was kind of my lesson learned. All I need for dessert is dark chocolate. And this is what I said. I can have a great E or S meal followed up by two squares of very dark chocolate. A note about xylitol or erythritol is THM sweeteners. A case can be made that these can be helpful in a healing journey. Like what if someone is allergic to stevia, the sweet herb, and needs a little sweet to keep them happy on the healing journey. Use these sugar alcohols sparingly without guilt. If you're going to use a xylitol or erythritol, make sure it's non-GMO because otherwise it's most likely derived from corn. Also, I personally would choose erythritol over xylitol because one, I get bad cramping from xylitol, and two, erythritol is fermented and more easily handled by the body. So if you're listening along, um, that's my answer. <laughs> that's my answer. It really hasn't changed, but we are going to go more in depth now because 
Macy's asking and others are asking, are they healthy? Are they safe? Tell us more about these sugar alcohols. So even though that is my very simple answer, it hasn't changed, we're gonna go more in depth. Because although 99% of the time I only use Stevia, um, like Macy is asking, there are special occasions where I will pull out the erythritol so that we can have um, cakes, cookies, or an other dessert without consuming sugar. An example would be, and I'm gonna tell you all more about these at the end, um, an example would be these wonderful chocolate dipped shortbread cookies. They are so yummy. They come from Lindsay Dietz. And if you go to traditionalcookingschool.com today, um, you will see the recipe there. I made these yesterday. Family is in love with them. And we do have treats like this, like about, oh, once a month or so. And I use the sugar alcohols. And the reason we do this is because it's really important emotionally um, for a lot of people in order to endure, and I know I'm painting it in a negative light, but for a lot of people, a healing journey, a weight loss journey, when you have food restrictions, when you're around people and they're eating things that you can't eat, even though you believe in what you're doing, it's hard. It's hard to restrict and feel like you can't ever enjoy those things that you used to enjoy again. That's why I say there's this big reason of its own that it's an emotional reason that it's really important every once in a while to be able to say yes to those things so that you can endure the longer journey of healing or weight loss. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. So that's really like the big reason behind why um, I myself was even willing to consider things like erythritol and, and xylitol um, and why we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk more, more reasons than that today, okay? So I just think that a treat every month or so, or even every week or so, if that's what um, works for you, that it can go a long way to helping you endure the journey. And someone on Periscope is saying, yep, on a candida cleanse diet. That's another example of a healing diet where if you had something to turn to for a treat every now and then, it can help you stick with the protocol. So we're gonna start today's episode just by discussing what are sugar alcohols. So sugar alcohols like erythritol here or xylitol, they're called sugar alcohols. Um, they get their name partially because their chemical structure resembles sugar and it also re part resembles alcohol. So they're kind of like a hybrid of sugar molecules and alcohol molecules. They do occur naturally in plants. They're called polyols. So you find them in apples, pears, and vegetables. Um, and they're used as sugar substitutes because they look and taste and function very much like sugar, but they contain much fewer carbohydrates than sugar. And they provide the sweetness, like in these cookies, these shortbread cookies, they provide the sweetness without raising the blood sugar. So they're considered safe for diabetics and people with blood sugar problems, um, like insulin resistance and hypoglycemia. Um, they're also very helpful on healing protocols like GAPS. Well, I'm sorry, they're probably not allowed on GAPS, though some people may use them, but many Candida protocols would call for them. Uh, weight loss programs like Trim Healthy Mama would call for them. Anyway, they can be very helpful on those kind of healing journeys. And the, everything that I just read you is actually a quote from my friend, Lindsay Dietz. She is our content director and also a writer at Traditional Cooking School. Um, and she has put together a free guide on alternative sweeteners. And there's a link with this video for you to grab that. I highly recommend it because she goes more in depth, okay? Um, so let's move on to the next question are, and really the topic today, are xylitol and erythritol natural? Okay, so the polyols we were talking about that sugar alcohols are, they occur naturally in plants like apples, pears, and vegetables. So yes, the sugar alcohols are natural because they're in the natural plants, right? But it's the processing to extract them into a pure powdered form that may not be natural or normal because you can't do it in a normal kitchen, okay? Now, arguably, uh, that doesn't mean it's all bad. I mean, there are things that, um, there's processing that uh, happens to food that we don't necessarily do in a um, normal kitchen. Doesn't mean it's bad, so it's just something to consider. And also when you're talking about them being natural, you also want to consider um, 
the genetically modified aspect. So in general, when you see xylitol or erythritol on the market or in foods, they're generally de derived from corn, very often from corn. And corn is one of those crops that is always, um, nearly always genetically modified in today's modern world, or at least in the United States. So that's why uh, that's another kind of consideration to make when you're asking the question, are these natural? So if they're, if they're coming from um, genetically modified corn, mm, not so good, but you can source white birch or genetically or um, non-GMO xylitol, and you can source non-GMO erythritol. It, st it still comes from corn, uh, but it's non-genetically modified. Okay, so that's the natural question. It is natural because it's in plants, but you do have to consider the processing. We're going to talk about that a little, in a little bit. You also have to consider the genetically modified aspect. Now, are they safe? Which really is the bigger question, right? Are they safe to consume? They may be found in plants. The processing may be okay that we can live with, but are they safe? So although they are generally considered safe, there are certain individuals who shouldn't consume sugar alcohols. And this is going to be some bullet points that I share here, you can get them at askwardy.tv for future reference. They do come from that free guide I mentioned to you, the Guide to Alternative Sweeteners. There's a link with this video for you to grab that more in depth. So here are some contraindications. If you have, um, if you experience severe indigestion when consuming them, or you have a digestive issue like IBS, then this is gonna cause you problems. Um, Sugar alcohols aren't totally absorbed during digestion, so they ferment in the intestines, and this fermentation produces gas, which may build up and result in bloating, flatulence, or discomfort. So that's a contraindication. Another one is dogs. Do you have dogs that live with you that could possibly get into your food pantry, into your storage? Um, xylitol is, is extremely toxic to dogs. The other sugar alcohols, erythritol is one, appear to be safe, but to be on the safe side, you wanna either make sure you don't consume them if there's any chance at all that your dog's gonna get into your pantry or that they're well out of reach. Maybe the dogs are always outside, so it's not a concern, but that is something you wanna weigh carefully so that you don't um, fatally harm your dogs. It's very serious. Um, another contraindication is you're addicted to sweets. So if you're addicted to sweets, turning to sugar alcohols like erythritol, xylitol to bake these, you're not gonna break a sugar addiction. Um, you want to break your sugar addiction by just um, going without sweets entirely to, to stop, craving the, the, stop craving the sweet taste, to stop doing that roller coaster of um, sugar rush. That has to be broken. And then you would indulge occasionally if you can handle it. But if you're addicted to sweets, this is not the answer. Uh, finally, if you're sensitive to corn. So if you are sensitive to corn um, and you chose to use xylitol, xylitol can be derived from non-GMO white birch, but you have to look for it specifically. Uh, I'm gonna go into in a moment why I actually prefer erythritol. And erythritol, unfortunately, only comes from corn. And you do seek out non-GMO corn, but if you're sensitive to corn, uh, there's, there's really no answer there. All right, so let's talk about the differences between xylitol and erythritol. They're both sugar alcohols, but they're different. And I prefer one, and I don't use the other. And here's the situation. So they both can cause symptoms of indigestion when consumed in large amounts, okay? And if you have IBS or a digestive condition, maybe, any amount won't be good, but for the normal person who is generally healthy in their digestive system, um, large amounts of either can cause indigestion. But normal amounts of erythritol are a lot easier to handle, and I experienced this myself. Xylitol is a problem for me, erythritol isn't, and this is because it has a smaller molecule size, so it just does better in the body, okay? So that's just one reason why if sugar alcohols are gonna be accepted by you as something that you eat in moderation or occasionally, um, erythritol is better, in my opinion. And another thing is the processing. So if erythritol is produced through fermentation, which I believe is a much more natural process, xylitol is produced through a process called uh, sugar hydrogenation, which there are reasons not to prefer that. It's more highly processed and objectionable. 
Okay, so bottom line here is uh, unless corn is an issue and so how do I want to say this? So unless corn is an issue and you always want to get non-GMO no matter what, you'd prefer erythritol, otherwise xylitol, but tread carefully. Okay, those are my opinions, which I should state just, um, I always do, but let me state it that um, as always, I'm sharing my experience. And the reason that we have these Ask Wardy sessions is for me to talk about the things that I've gone over and researched when questions come in from all of you. Um, but what I'm sharing is not meant to tell you what to do. It's meant to help you on your own journey, getting your own research together and making the decision for you. Okay, so when would someone use sugar alcohols? As I said before, that if you're on a healing diet, even you know Candida or it's a weight loss program, that um, occasional treats can really help your state of mind and your ability to endure the long journey. Special occasions are to break the monotony. That's how we personally in our family approach our use of sugar alcohols. So every few months on a holy day or a birthday, I will bake a treat like these shortbread cookies um, using erythritol. We all enjoy it very much and we eat it in moderation. And 99% of the time we're using stevia, a sweet herb, or no sweetness at all. And that's how, um, that's how we approach it in our home, if that helps any of you. So now coming to the topic of today, bottom line here, are they healthy? Are xylitol and erythritol healthy? Here's the thing, we gotta put this in perspective. Eating less sugar, taking the sugar out of your life is always a good thing, right? Um, whether you're following Trim Healthy Mama, a candida cleanse, uh, other healing diets, or just have decided I'm addicted to sugar, I gotta cut back, that's a really good thing. So in my opinion, if you cut back on your sugar drastically and you replace it with sugar alcohols or stevia in moderation, that now and then it can be part of a healthy diet. That's my opinion. Um, you may have seen natural dental products out there. They're, they're saying with xylitol. Well, the xylitol isn't consumed, so it doesn't cause much of a concern at all. But when you're talking about consuming it in foods, no sugar alcohol, in order to keep it healthy, should be consumed in large amounts. Remember we were talking about those digestive issues? Well, the number I've seen with erythritol, which is my chosen form, is 50 grams per sitting for an adult. Don't exceed that. That's like three and a half tablespoons. And with children, it's even less. So as, if you can abide by that, you know, per sitting rule, and you do it in moderation, you know, occasionally rather than as a regular daily staple, then in my opinion, yes, it can be part of a healthy diet. Really, it comes down to the thing that we talk about over and over and over again, that moderation is key. We just shouldn't overindulge in anything, um, including sugar alcohols like erythritol. Um, I do have a link for you below this video on the non-GMO erythritol that we purchase. If you're interested in getting some, I wanna give you some tips on how to use it in your baking. So it's really marvelous because as I said before, you can pretty much use it cup for cup in your sugar recipes. So if you have a recipe that you love that calls for a dry sweetener like white sugar, brown sugar, cup for cup, just use erythritol. Now, a um, couple additional tips for you is um, I prefer to take the erythritol and I whiz it, I say, in our Vitamix. And that just makes it into a fine powder. And I find that it um, dissolves better and works better in recipes if it's ground a little bit finer. It's kind of like a large crystal, like white sugar. Um, but I think the crystals are maybe a little bit bigger and they're stronger, <laughs> tougher. Um, so I whiz it and make it into a powder and that just works better for me in recipes. One of the things that you'll find though when you're using erythritol, you can substitute it cup for cup um, and in recipes where it is the bulk of the recipe, meaning if you left it out, the recipe's texture would suffer. Um, use it cup for cup, but you're gonna find that it's less sweet than sugar. Now, if your recipe is already um, like on the sweet side, that'll probably be fine. But if it's a recipe that's already been modified down to like minimal sweetness, you might find that using erythritol cup for cup is not sweet enough. So you have two options at that point. One is, 
just leave it be, <laughs> just have it be less sweet. Another one is to blend your erythritol with stevia, a stevia powder. Now the stevia question, just wanna address that. The least processed best ways to have stevia is in a liquid extract form. A powdered stevia is more processed, so this is a compromise to blend erythritol with powdered stevia. But if you just have it occasionally, like we're talking about, maybe it's okay with you. If you wanna be absolutely purist about it, then you, you wouldn't do this, okay? But as a general rule, you do a blend. And um, if you grab that free guide from Lindsay that I mentioned earlier, she's got a, a blend recipe that she uses in her household. Basically, the range is one cup of erythritol to a half to one teaspoon of stevia, with one teaspoon of stevia making a really sweet blend and a half teaspoon being moderately sweet. And you combine that together, you can scale it up or down, and then you use that blend cup for cup in your recipes. That's how you overcome the erythritol being less sweet but you are not changing the bulk of the recipe. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Okay, now nourishing recipes using erythritol. Um, so we have one right now, this comes from Lindsay, and just look below this video for a link to um, these chocolate dipped shortbread cookies. They're amazing. They are also um, allergy friendly because they're grain free and they just use a couple of ingredients. Um, anyway, nourishing recipes, they're hard to come by. You can scour Google, you can look on the internet, you can like look for low carb or sugar free or whatnot, and you may find recipes that call for erythritol or xylitol, but the other ingredients are just downright scary. So you don't wanna use those. So it is um, harder to find recipes that not only use the sugar alcohols, but that are nourishing overall. And that's why we have this recipe for you today. So definitely check it out following a link with this recording. Um, but I also want to tell you about um, a brand new, and I'm going to pull up a picture for you here. Um, where is it? A brand new e-cookbook from Lindsay called Sweet Without Sugar. She just released it the other day, and I am so pleased. Here it is. That's the cover of it. It's an e-cookbook, which means it comes in digital form. It's called Sweet Without Sugar. It is 40% off right now because she just released it. And it has grain-free, trim healthy mama friendly, allergy friendly, uh, paleo primal friendly, low carb, sugar free recipes for all kinds of desserts. They are nourishing, so they use ingredients like coconut oil and butter and gelatin and collagen. Um, they all, all have those allergy friendly attributes. There's 59 total recipes. Um, there's cookies, cakes, pies, just ice creams, all kinds of desserts. And one thing that excites me the most, um, because as I told you, we have these treats occasionally only, with the 59 recipes, we're gonna have recipes for years to come. <laughs> Endless variety, because we just don't make them very often. But I've tried a couple, including these, and these were a total hit, these chocolate dip shortbread cookies. Um, Everybody loved them and they said, please make them again. Thank you for the recipe, Lindsay. Uh, my husband said, I can't remember his exact words, but something to the effect of like, you, they're as good or better than, you know, the regular cookies. You just don't miss anything. They're just like totally satisfying. He loved them. Everybody loves them. I really wish I could share. I know I do this to you more often than not. I bring food and then um, I can't, I can't pour it through the video. But back to um, the Sweet Without Sugar e-cookbook, I definitely encourage all of you to grab it. There's a link with this video or you can go to tradcookschool.com slash sweet without sugar, all one word, sweet without sugar, or look for a link below. It's 40% off, you gotta get it. And to say thank you for getting it, um, I wanna throw in a bonus and it is my sugar-free, real ice cream recipe. I have a picture for you and I did get this one loaded up. So this is your free bonus recipe if you purchase Lindsay's e-cookbook. This is our real ice cream recipe and I've made it sugar-free so I'm using um, erythritol stevia blend and when I say real ice cream it's because my family they're kind of 
oh, let's say purists about ice cream. So you can't use milk in ice cream. You have to use sweet cream because sweet cream means the ice cream is not icy. It's just smooth and creamy and mm, just luscious. So it's my recipe for sugar-free real ice cream um, with this sugar alcohol blend as the sweetener. You, it's kind of like a basic formula that anytime I make ice cream, that's what I start with. So if I wanted to make strawberry ice cream, for instance, I would take that basic filling and I'd blend it with strawberries. And then at the end of the churning, I would toss in cut up strawberries. Um, you can switch out the extracts, like if you wanted to use almond, um, you can add chocolate shavings at the end. You can make a chocolate base and then add chocolate shavings. Anyway, there's so many ways you can take it. And this is a free bonus recipe if you purchase Lindsay's e-cookbook. So the way that you get this, of course, you can go to askwardy.tv, look for this episode, and you'll see the details, or the details are actually listed at this um, recipe post as well. Um, so you purchase her e-cookbook and then you forward your receipt to me. Wardy, W-A-R-D-E-E, -E, at askwardy.tv and say, I want your ice cream recipe. And then we'll send it to you by email. It's really simple. Um, it's really manual as well, because I just decided, I think last night, I said, Lindsay, I'm gonna give everyone who purchases your e-cookbook a free recipe of my own. And she thought it was a great idea, and I'm happy to give it to you all, because I haven't published it. So get her e-cookbook and then get my bonus recipe. And I should also remind all of you that this recipe comes from her e-cookbook. So if you just want to try out the method first um, and get introduced to her, you know, the baking with sugar alcohols via this recipe, just look for the link with this uh, recording and you can try out these chocolate dip shortbread cookies. They have just a very few ingredients and then you dip them in the end in Lily's, uh, melted Lily's chocolate chips. Lily's chocolate chips, it's non-GMO, sweetened with erythritol and stevia. So it's um, really as nearly as good as what we could make in our own kitchens. It's a great resource. All right, and I guess I should tell you all um, before we go that at askwardy.tv I have other links for you. Like if you want to hear my story of how I lost more than 30 pounds um, in a year combining Trim Healthy Mama with uh, traditional foods, it would be called The Purest Way. Um, the story is there. I also have a free one week menu plan for you. So if you're interested in um, following Trim Healthy Mama with traditional food, go and download my menu plan. It's one week of all the meals, meaning dinners, breakfast, lunches, even snacks and desserts that you'll need for an entire week, including a shopping list and prep steps and everything for you to give it a try. Um, that is at tradcookschool.com slash free menu, or just look for the link with this video. Let's see what else. Uh, links to the guide to alternative sweeteners that's free, link to the Sweet Without Sugar E cookbook, instructions for claiming the bonus recipe when you purchase that cookbook, um, the sugar-free chocolate dip shortbreads, shortbread recipes is there for you. And also if you're interested in like uh, sourcing the erythritol that we do, there's a link there for you and also a link to my preferred brand of Stevia. Boy, lots of stuff there for you, all at askwardy.tv. So uh, Macy, thanks for the question, really appreciate it. Um, it's good for me to refresh on these things that I've looked into. And that's what I end up doing every time one of you submits a question, which is my hint hint to submit your questions for Ask Wardy. Um, we do have quite a queue, but go ahead and throw your questions in there. The hashtag is Ask Wardy. So if you're on Twitter, you can tweet your question um, in 140 characters or less to me at Trad Cook School. Use that hashtag. If you're not on Twitter, email works. So it's um, Wardy, W-A-R-D-E-E -E, at askwardy.tv, which is also where you send your receipt to get the free bonus recipe when you purchase Lindsay's e-cookbook. Okay, so thanks everyone so much for being here. God bless you, and I'll see you again in a week, same time, same place, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>